Those who have been following this channel since its inception know that covering bizarre cases of compulsive uploading on YouTube is a large percentage of my content. From the prophetic uploads of Bob Hickman, to the deranged and possibly dangerous documentation of Angry Neighbor, getting to know enigmatic individuals through how they've chosen to present themselves to the internet has been a huge part of Atrocity Guide. Today, I'd like to talk about what is possibly the strangest, most controversial, and easily the most requested instance of them all. I'm talking about a 46-year-old Russian woman named Anna Matskovich, who began uploading in 2008 under the username RefBatch. For the last decade, RefBatch has been uploading on a near-constant basis. It isn't unusual for her to upload more than 20 times per day and over several years, her videos quickly accumulated in the tens of thousands. Roughly half of the videos consist of Anna speaking directly into the camera in an unintelligible blend of Russian and English. Even those fluent in the language have trouble understanding what she's saying, as her rants tend to be angry, urgent, and dismayed, making them difficult to discern. Despite this, several people have identified phrases that suggest Anna is paranoid of her government or of being abducted and held against her will. The other half of Anna's uploads are dedicated to interpretive dance, in which Anna makes unwavering eye contact with the viewer while moving slowly and arrhythmically to what is most often the ambient sounds of the forest. The dancing, along with her athletic build, as well as the clothing she wears during these videos, has led many viewers to speculate whether Anna has a background in the performative arts. Googling her name and her location reveals an Anna Matskovich listed with the World Dance Sport Federation. Because I was unable to find any pictures of this performer, it's impossible to know if this is the very same Anna Matskovich or simply someone who shares her name, location, and interest. However, it's worth noting that this dancer's performances appear to have stopped in late 2008, the time Rethbatch began uploading videos. Regardless of whether Anna was a professional dancer who became unable to perform due to a debilitating condition, there's no doubt of the eerie undercurrent which seems to pervade her videos, leading many to puzzle over the backstory of this unique individual. The simple, most obvious theory for Anna Matskovich's compulsive uploading is mental illness. Attributing Anna's behavior to something like paranoid schizophrenia certainly wouldn't be unreasonable, and this theory is perhaps the most likely, as it explains all aspects of her behavior and requires no leaps in logic. However, let me present another more oblique theory. A man by the name of Maxim Belov, identifying himself as Anna's husband, has uploaded videos of Anna on his own channel accompanied by long descriptions which state that Anna is a victim of four psychotropic drugs which were administered because Anna was speaking out against Russia's oppressive political system. He describes his wife's experience in punitive psychological institutions using phrases such as forcible treatment and strong psychotropic medicals. While it's certainly possible that Anna and Maxim suffer from a phenomenon known as folia du, a shared delusion which can manifest between two people who spend a significant amount of time together, let's take a closer look at Maxim's claims. Maxim claimed Anna was arrested by Moscow law enforcement near Bolotnaya Square on May 6, 2013, under the pretense of actions against the state. A quick search reveals that there was in fact a political demonstration at Bolotnaya Square on this date and that several protesters were arrested and sent to psychiatric clinics against their will. 
While this event happened long after Refbatch began uploading, Maxim claims this targeting of Anna has been going on for a long time, due to her history of outspoken political dissension. Is it possible that Anna Matskovich was once a mentally healthy person who became the target of her own government? Unfortunately, yes, this isn't entirely unlikely. To fully understand the plausibility of this theory, let's look at the term known as sluggish schizophrenia. Sluggish schizophrenia, or slow progressive schizophrenia, was a diagnostic category used in Soviet Union to describe what they claimed was a form of schizophrenia, characterized by a slowly progressive course. It was diagnosed even in a patient who showed no symptoms of schizophrenia or other psychotic disorders, on the assumption that these symptoms would later appear. The diagnosis has long been discredited because of its scientific inadequacy and its use as a means of confining dissenters. It has never been used or recognized outside of Soviet Union or by international organizations such as the World Health Organization. It is considered a prime example of the political abuse of psychiatry in the Soviet Union. So we know Russia has a history of diagnosing and forcing treatment on individuals who speak out against the government. But this all happened during the Soviet Union. Surely it isn't still happening today, right? Unfortunately, there is evidence to suggest this practice persists even now, and Anna and her husband are certainly not the only ones who have claimed to be victims of this immoral and barbaric suppression of speech. In an article from Newsweek in 2017 with the headline, Political Psychiatric Abuse Returns to Russia and Ex-Soviet States, Several citizens testify that they've been apprehended by Russian authorities and have been treated for a mental illness they didn't have due to their outspoken political beliefs. According to the article, punitive psychiatry began to reappear again at the turn of the millennium in Russia under President Vladimir Putin, as well as in other post-Soviet states. A recent report by Federation Global Initiative on Psychiatry an NGO that monitors human rights and psychiatry in the former Soviet Union, has recorded more than 30 cases from 2012 through April 17, in which human rights activists and journalists have been illegally detained in psychiatric institutions for up to 10 years. Analysts believe the real number of cases is considerably higher. Also mentioned in the article is a disturbing case of an individual being forced to take medication. In May 2016, 16-year-old Gleb Astavyev was confined to a psychiatric institution for 15 days after a protest. He had been demonstrating in support of the dissident performance artist Piotr Pavlinsky, who had spent a month in a mental hospital earlier that year. Astavyev says his hospital stay included five days in a special ward for mentally ill patients. Every morning we were given pills to take but I managed to spit them out, he says. I don't know what the medication was, it seemed to turn people into vegetables. So, is this what happened to Anna Matskovich? Did psychiatric treatment at the behest of her Russian government turn her into the person we see today? I sent an email to Maxim, asking to speak with him further about his wife and her psychiatric treatment. But unfortunately, he never responded and due to the email address being Russian, I'm not sure if my message ever reached him. So my research hasn't led to empirical evidence which support any one theory, and I encourage you to take what's been said in this video with a grain of salt. My opinion is that the most likely cause of Refbatch's behavior is mental illness, and that Maxim is indulging her out of grief, denial, or perhaps his own struggles with delusion. However, Maxim's testimonial isn't entirely outrageous, or even unprecedented, and their uploads from he and his wife may very well be their only outlet for the abuse their family has suffered at the hands of an oppressive regime. Even the screen name of Maxim's YouTube channel, a reference to French author Alexandre Dumas, whose most famous work centers around political activism and wrongful imprisonment, 
seems to serve as a cryptic reminder that freedoms can be dismantled by dictators who demand blind loyalty, and remaining quiet only forces us deeper into submission. Although we may never know the truth, Anna Matskevich continues to upload daily. Since 2008, she's cycled through many different YouTube accounts, either due to YouTube banning them or for other unknown reasons. Just to name a few, she's uploaded under Even the word itself, refbatch, is mysterious, as it's neither a word in English nor Russian, and after running it through anagram detectors, it doesn't seem to be code for anything. Whether Anna Matskevich's compulsive uploads are a cry for help, or the more likely scenario, a result of mental illness, she doesn't appear to be stopping anytime soon. All we can do is wish her and her husband the best, and hope they're able to eventually get the help they need in one way or another. A special thanks goes out to the following Reddit and YouTube users for suggesting this video. It has been one of my most requested subjects, and I had a blast researching, writing, and making it. If you enjoyed this video and look forward to similar content, please consider subscribing, and if you have any suggestions for future videos, please leave them in the comments below. Also, if you're already a subscriber and want to stay up to date on the channel, consider following me on Twitter at Atrocity Guide.